It's your Marty signing in. Welcome to part. Is it part 20 already? No. Welcome to part 19 of the SCLE Plus Plus and SFML 2 Plus for tutorial series. So, last tutorial, we basically, I just showed you guys how I like to create my textures that I use in the game, and I just gave you a brief tutorial on how to create textures and all that fun stuff. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a collision detection function between the player and between the platforms. And if you're wondering why this is like moving with such crappy slow frame rate and that's just because I'm recording and the way it's working right now is it's we're moving our guy based on frame rate which is not a good idea so the faster a frame runs the faster a guy moves which is not a good idea because then if you got a weaker computer then the game's gonna run a bit slow on that computer rather than it running at the same speed across any platform so we're gonna fix that today we're gonna hopefully create the collision detection which is a bit of a big project so if you guys need to slow another video pause it feel free to do that because the collision detecting it can be get a little hairy when they're in there coding the adrenaline surging you've just when you got the coder juices you don't worry about tomorrow's coder juices you just use those juices so that's why we coders pull all-nighters you know we, we don't worry about tomorrow if we, if we feel in the mood nobody's taking our hands off the keyboard. It's actually sometimes when I first started program, I really like I love to code so much that I'd sometimes just forget what time was, and it'd be like way later up than it really should have been when I had to do school and everything because it's just it was really a ton of fun. So anyway, enough about that. Let's start coding. All right, and this I'm fairly sure is how we left a lot of time. I'm just gonna scroll down a quick second just to make sure that you guys have caught up. All this code is just the same for you. Whoops, I just bumped my light, which, oh, oh. <laughs> So, actually, lighting does help your videos a ton, really. Just for any other, anyone else trying YouTube, the lighting is essential. Actually, it gives a higher lightness, so you don't have to up that lightness, thus retaining higher quality. So, anyway, so that's the code where we left it last time. We have a guy running around. Now, we'll start by creating the collision detecting system. Before we can do that, what we want to do is we want to go into player class, or platform class, really, and it's either we're going to want to create a few integers, and we're going to call this, you know, create integer with int, and we're going to call this top side starting with and we're going to need these because we're going to be using the top left hand i'll just pull a paint a second here to demonstrate what i'm saying and so the way this sprite box works is you have this little hit box which this is the sprite so we have this position we're going to be using the left side the top side the bottom side and the right side of it a ton and typically the way we'd say that is just we go we get the x coordinate of it and then we add the width of it to get the right side but wouldn't it be just re way easier to just say right side of it every time we do that yeah so we're going to save ourselves some lines of code don't worry about that they're paint and we're going to create a few integers which we're not going to assign anything to them yet because we we don't know exactly how big our platform is yet so we're going to assign that in a constructor so top side, bottom side, just do the same thing for all sides. You can name this how you like it. This is just my programming style. And then right side, we want to go with. And integer left side. Last one. And that was semicolon. So inside here, now we're going to actually want to assign those values. Assign some values to the variables. Okay, but anyway, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to go image after we've scaled it. To gather the left side is fairly easy. It's just going to be x. So image dot get and well hold on a second before we do that we want to go left side because we're going to say what val what variable is getting the value left side equals and then we're going to go image dot get position dot get pos position and then dot x oh and then and let off the semicolon and that's all we're going to need for that then we're going to go right side's a tad bit more complicated right side equals image again once more image dot get position so what we're taking a look at today get position opens parameters make sure you spell all right doesn't seem to like typos which i understand when i see a typo i don't really like it either so dot y and then that's not the only thing we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to add the width of it but there's a bit of a glitch with uh gathering the width of a sprite on sf mall it does not take into account transformation slots rotations and scaling so we're gonna have to do that manually not too big of a deal so to do that we're gonna have to go plus because we're adding to it open some parameters so that honestly we don't need to open these parameters but it's just gonna help help our minds remember that inside the parameters this argument gets done first because just like a math class in school the it goes like first you solve parameters then powers then multiplication then addition same way in programming so inside the innermost parameters we're gonna start by getting the position of our, getting the width of our sprite. So we're just gonna image dot get local brown bounds is the command dot get to local bounds and then dot width is the one we're gonna interested in and then space times. So use the asterisk symbol to multiply in C plus plus 
times, and then we're going to go with the scale, our scale of our sprite. So we can take into account four transformations. And along with the semicolon, whew, one big line. So hopefully my face is not covering up in the corner. So, and then just down the below, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go top side, starting with top side equals and then we're, we're gonna go image once more and again you guys can probably predict what i'm about to do i'm just gonna go to the same thing i did for x instead of x i'm gonna use y so image dot get position and then dot again i keep spelling every time i spell position i always spell wrong like that i don't know why i just weird type away so dot whoops we used y here which up here we're gonna want to use x because the x position is the width of it so th that's important to keep in mind and then y for here which easy enough for that and then we're going to go bottom side because the bottom one we're going to add a few more arguments to it like we're going to add we're going to give it a few more instructions of what it exactly is which is image dot get position why did i say get positions i don't know oh well the joys of the program area get to position you get to read over all kinds of funny stuff that you thought it looked good when you headed to bed late at night but it didn't look so good when you had a fresh look at it in the morning which I've done a few times on like stuff. I'm like, why did I, eh, why did I do that? And then plus, open some parameters, and my, I'm the semicolon right now, just so I, there's a few. Let's just, it's a good habit to end the semicolon first. And inside your image dot get local bounds, local bounds dot height instead. Not, we're not gonna go with width. We're going with height because in order to get the bottom side of it, we're gonna need to add height to its y to its y position and multiply that times scale to take into account for transformations and there it goes so that's about all the variables we're going to need for now take out the extra lines if you want your code to look nice i know that some code checkers are extremely they get ooh, they get ticked if you leave an extra space like that some of them do get seriously ticked with do that so if you have a code checker make that code sing make that code look like the best you possibly can make so anyway now we are finished in the platform class we're ready to actually do the collision detection inside the player class which is where it's all going to happen so inside the player class we're going to create another function and to do that to create a function that does not return a data type that just basically it does a whole bunch of stuff but doesn't really return anything you just use void so we're going to go void make sure it's little if you're on code blocks anyway it should be bold and blue if you have typed it all out correctly and you should say void and we're going to call this collision because that's honestly fairly easy to remember. Open some parameters, open up some curly braces, give yourself a little space to work. Now, we're gonna wanna give it a, a couple of parameters. The parameter we wanna give it is what are we gonna be colliding with, which in this case is a platform. So we're gonna have to use the pl access the platform class, and we should keep this specific so we can call this platforms because this is what we're gonna be like colliding with all the basic platforms. So platform class platforms, that's the only real argument that we're gonna really need for now. For now that's all we're gonna need for arguments. And also while we're here, we're gonna take out this line that is doing virtually nothing. X position plus equals Y velocity. We don't need to take it we don't need to create have this integer or float floating around that's just saying we have this another copy of y position because the image already the image is like a vector it already has the x and y position so unneeded lines take them out it's just slowing down our game so now our collision function our beautiful empty collision function is never going to be run because nobody's telling it to do anything it just got all set up and it's like well do we need me so we're gonna what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want you run it so to run it you just type collision and we don't need to say that it collision belongs to the player class because it's inside the player class so the player class knows that it has a collision function so you just go collision on we could probably call it, just call it collide to save a couple characters and to save a couple typos too so collide and then give it some parameters of course which and we're going to give it the parameter of our platform so we can keep it the same easy enough because it's not going to change too much platforms and then here we're so we're giving it this argument of platforms but it's, the compiler is going to say, what the heck is platforms? Player class has no idea what, a pl what platforms is. So up here in update, we're going to have to tell what platforms is. Which platforms is a platform class. And, whoops, no capital P though. So it's platform class is what a platforms are. And platforms. Th this is sometimes long lines of code are, are just unavoidable. So if you guys know, actually know how you like can shorten up one of these lines of code like that, I'd love to hear that. That would be really awesome if I could, if we could figure out how to make this update function, make the parameters on it not quite so long, that'd be great besides making the font smaller. But anyway, so now we've told update that it's going to get this 
it's going to get this awesome parameter of platforms, but it's going to be still saying, what is platforms? Where did that come from? So we're going to have to tell down here, we're going to have to scroll down into, where are we at? In the main function right here. Scroll down into the main function. And where we tell it to update, we're going to also want to give it, let's see what we got here. What would we say it was? It was platform OBJ. So we're going to give it the parameter of platform OBJ. So that's going to be the parameter, which is the platform. So then all good from there. So we can save that. Alrighty. So now we're just we're just gonna save it and run it to make sure we don't have any errors. It's always important to keep your errors. If you compile and run it, if you check for errors often, it's gonna save a huge lifesaver. So you don't have like 50 million errors all at the same time, which uh, then it, then your task of debugging it just goes from nearly impossible to almost impossible. Let's see what he's got. So we have player cl platform. That's right. Typo platform class good thing we caught that now if you have a whole bunch of typo stack up it just it's annoying to like fix ton after typo after typo really can dishearten a programmer so just kind of if you just have regular intervals debug it's just a good habit in general so it's all running the same so that's all good so now we can actually create the logic so we're going to start with an if statement we're going to begin by detection the way we're with that, we're going to do collision detection, which there's several ways of doing it. One way is to detect using bit masks, which is a bit complicated. So I'm just going to use the simple way that's the simple way that I know that works. So we have ourselves two squares here. So I'm just going to fill these with a color. So we know that red or green, since green is my favorite color, green is ourselves, red is the platform. So we are this block. So when we want to, want to collide is when the right hand edge of our right tangle overglides overlaps into the left hand side of the platform so when that happens then we want him to stop moving and we want to set the right hand position of him set him over to there so and again pretty much the same thing for on top of it same thing for to the right of it that's basically how we're going to do it and we're going to do it based on the x and y coordinates of each sprite i'm not sure if the way of doing it using a bit mask is more efficient or faster i'm not really sure but the way that of going about this c++ is so fast anyway it's not really going to matter really so first we're going to test if our image dot we're going to go get position is what we're going to want to look take a look at so we're going to want to begin by gathering the position of ourselves which is going to be dot is image dot get position dot x is greater than so if we're overlapping into the platform's little detectable square then something's going to happen so if we do overlap into the what was it platforms and then dot left side, I believe it was, dot left side. Then what's going to happen? There's not too much that we can really do there, except what we can do is we can go image dot set position, dot set position on the parameters, and we're going to say vector 2f because a vector, just like in math, is it basically has two as an x location, an x coordinate, and a y coordinate. So that's like my mouse is way over here. So that's a vector right there, how high up it is, how far it is to left or right. So, and then we'll open up some parameters inside that, and in that line of semicolon, just to good coding practice. And inside here, we're going to want to give it the platforms dot left side, because right now we're, you're dealing with the X and Y, we're dealing with the X coordinates, so dot left side. So if you overlap, you're going to be set back to the platforms left side, which is going to give us the collision detecting. And then we're just going to give it image dot get position to not we're not going to want to change the y position we're not going to want to change the y coordinate because there's no need to honestly right now at this point if we're just collect detecting for left and right right here we forgot to close that parameter so you gotta make sure you, it's a very good healthy habit to open and close parameters as you go so if you're typing um some big test open open up some parameters you're going to want to close it instantaneously a code box actually does it for you by default so by it's already instilling good programming practices into your brain so anyway we gotta close that off save that try it now yes got all errors F classic error okay so now we can move to left and right up and down and everything so if we move to the right and then we hit the right side of that block our guy can no longer move so this is where we are going to end the video so we have basic collision detection with one side of the block but it's not with all the sides so in the next video we're going to get full collision detection with all sides of the block so then it's going to work basically how any 2d platform works you know collide with the platforms and whatnot and we can use the same collision detection function with other things such as enemies such as points all sorts of stuff so i hope you guys all enjoyed this video thank you for, so much for watching and subscribing if you have any questions or comments leave that down in the comment section and i'll be seeing you next video
It's your Mardiel.